Okay, Your Excellency, my first question is, of course, how is uh, the current corona situation in your country, in, uh, in, in Georgia? Thank you very much for hosting me. Of course, you know, corona concern is a global one and my country is no exception. It's, I would say, very comparable to current trend uh, overall in Europe, also here in Austria. So we have um, slightly increasing numbers and we have a big campaign for vaccination because yeah. this is probably the only viable solution for all of us to increase the percentage of vaccinated population and make the coronavirus more manageable and give us an opportunity to go back to normal life. Um, we are also having this moderate regulations mm -hmm. which allows the economy to a little bit recover from uh, what has been uh, the longer term implication of lockdowns and hopefully we would not need measures that mm -hmm. would again uh, no stop uh, the country's mm -hmm. major sectors from okay. quiet. I've heard you have four uh, waves already um, and uh, can you tell us how many people are vaccinated? Well, I have to probably make a small introduction to that. So we had um, a little bit belated access to vaccinations mm -hmm. as it's compared to here. So we had been in a queue and some of the friends, including Austria, with a certain number of AstraZeneca vaccines helped us in a very concrete uh, period when uh, we, we were short of that amount of vaccine, so I'm very grateful to the Austrian state and other uh, friends uh, who helped us to get the vaccines. But it was a, a few months delay, so we are not yet there, I would say, in terms of percentage, but mm. uh, we are now working on that. On that. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you tell us something about uh, what are the effects uh, of Corona on the, on the Georgian uh, economy so far? Yes, unfortunately, the economy has been suffering everywhere. Mm -hmm. The global economy has been suffering. Implications are quite uh, quite big and large. So um, many sectors have suffered. Georgia is also very much a tourism country, mm -hmm. like Austria. So you can imagine with the restrictions of mobility and mm -hmm. with lockdowns, uh, we had a heavy loss in the sector of tourism and in terms of income. Of course, uh, we also tried to support the business so to avoid uh, long-term consequences for for every sector. Uh, the good thing is like uh, that we are now projected uh, to grow 6.6 percent this year, and every next year around five to six percent. Mm -hmm. So in the course of next three years which is uh, quite good, I would say, but uh, for the moment we are still recovering and probably we will need up to two years to, or one year, at least one year more to uh, go back to the pre-COVID uh, mm. marks mm -hmm. in the economy. Okay, marks. let me switch to another question uh, and another topic. Um, you had uh, local elections in the yes. last weeks. Um, last weekend, the second round. Um, can you tell us something about these uh, elections uh, and the result of these uh, elections? Um, and uh, what would you say, what are the consequences for, for the country's uh, politics? Uh, uh, can you tell us something? Yeah, of course. That? I mean, uh, like in uh, every democratic country, elections is a very important event and the way for every citizen to participate directly in the political life with the most precious tool that each of us have, our own vote. And uh, of course, for Georgia, the country which regained its independence uh, uh, nearly 30 years ago after uh, Soviet occupation, uh, it's very important to secure that elections are administered along with all democratic standards. I'm very grateful that uh, international observers have been part of these elections as mm -hmm. well, uh, in the both rounds, mm -hmm. despite the COVID situation and pandemic. Mm -hmm. So basically we had the full uh, election mission of OSCE or DEAR. Uh, we had our friendly countries participating in these elections and even the parliamentary elections a year ago when the COVID situation is, uh, was even it was stronger, stronger uh, lockdown measures have been in place and Austria was the country to send the observers. We mm -hmm. took it as a sign of friendship and yeah. commitment yeah. because 
This is a gesture of, si of friendship and commitment, especially in these very difficult times, mm -hmm. to be there, to see, and it's an it's a invitation always of the host country, so Georgia has extended this invitation, and fortunately it was reciprocated in a good manner by our partners. So results uh, have, s people have spoken, the results are there. Um, the, the most important thing is like uh, with the local uh, elections and reforms and for this decentralization we have now the mayors of major cities which are uh, elected by direct vote mm -hmm. so and uh, the councils are also elected by by, by the local mm -hmm. voters of course and this gives a bigger leverage yeah, yeah. together with other leverages given by law to local regional mm -hmm. uh, community to uh, sort the life and uh, uh, of course decentralization or principle of subsidiarity on the level mm -hmm. of regions it's a priority for mm -hmm. georgia uh, and i think we will see a lot of uh, positive impact of these yeah. principles in future mm -hmm. so uh, we will of course look forward uh, I guess as a country to to hold also in future according to political schedule the elections which are democratic the rest is on the will yeah. power of the yeah. people and the mayors of course are much stronger if they are um, elected directly uh, that's that's clear right? so it's, it's a very good uh, decision uh, you have done um, um, Georgia has been linked to the EU since 2009 to the Eastern Partnership uh, and since 2016, through an association agreement uh, within the uh, European Neighborhood Policy, uh, and the visa-free regime has been in place since 2017. And uh, as I know, Georgia is preparing a formal application for EU membership uh, in 2024 to join the European Union. What is the state of progress uh, here, uh, how would you describe the current relationship between Georgia and the European Union? Um, thank you for this question because it really addresses a uh, core of what, yeah. what Georgia is as a nation. Uh, we are a European nation mm -hmm. uh, and the EU is not uh, a current political choice only. Our aspiration uh, to be a part of the European family is historic, it's civilizational. Uh, I would not even say it's a choice, it's, it's where we belong. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are very, very um, uh, clear uh, actually uh, parameters or merits that you could always measure it against. For instance, uh, in these recent years and since regaining independence when we have the possibility to conduct public polls over 80 percent of population of mm -hmm. georgia steadfastly supports eu integration mm -hmm. and this percentage did not change mm -hmm. so it's uh, it shows that it's uh, about the mentality of people being european is part of our dna by really okay. culture history everything mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. individuality human rights so aspiration to freedom um, we have european integration uh, as a part of our constitution it's written in okay. our constitution uh -huh. so it's a set uh, foreign policy vector but not only of foreign policy our domestic reforms are sorted mm -hmm. for uh, in line with uh, european, european standards yeah. mm -hmm. it's our precursor also for democratic reform it's our choice to mm -hmm. sort the country along the model that most of the EU countries share. Mm -hmm. And our partnership now with the EU, which is advanced uh, to association agreement, as you rightly noted, visa-free travel, which yeah. opens up a lot of possibilities, not only for tourists who may visit the beautiful city of yeah. Salzburg yeah, yeah. or <laughs> other destinations in Austria, but for students, for yeah. business people, yeah. for yeah. professionals yeah. like doctors, artists, culture, it's a total new setting between yeah. um, European Union and Georgia yeah. and of course we also have um, a DCFTA, it is a deep and comprehensive free trade agreement mm -hmm. that opens and paves the way for investment and free trade. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are just steps among many other which, uh, which is encompassed under the association agreement and this partnership only grows stronger mm -hmm. and I hope that this will be a trend and with our mandate here as ambassador in Austria we will contribute to overall uh, 
EU Georgia partnership, mm. also now a bilateral mm. cooperation trend. Thank you, yes. Of course, I have also um, to ask the question on the other side how would you describe the current uh, relationship with Russia? It's uh, unfortunately problematic, but not only by the choice of Georgia. Georgia's territories, uh, more than 20% of our territories no. are occupied by Russian Federation mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. These are two regions of Abkhazia and Srinvali, okay. South Ossetia. So we have uh, nearly 15% of our population is daily affected by the unresolved conflict. Mm -hmm. Among them, them are more than 300,000 uh, IDPs. Mm -hmm. who are exiled from their homes in the, uh, from Abkhazia and South Ossetia. These are ethnic Georgians yeah. who yeah. have been forced out and uh, they are not led back to their homes. Those are people who uh, live in the more than 100 divided villages, literally divided villages, where barbed wires are built by the occupation forces to simply hinder people-to-people -people contacts. Mm -hmm. And this happens because I think they also understand that people-to-people -people contacts, especially in our part of the world and in the Georgia context, they are the very powerful tool for reconciliation mm -hmm. and trust building. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, our population inside the occupied territories, which is of course largely depopulated, for instance, South Ossetia is depopulated 80%. And it continues to be depopulated. So imagine in uh, Abkhazia is 70% depopulated. Mm -hmm. And you overall have 10,000 military soldiers, while the whole population of uh, South Ossetia is 20,000. Mm -hmm. So it looks like an extended military base now. Yes, yeah. And uh, we have like over 130 military trainings and maneuvers per year mm -hmm. in this region. So you can imagine every second to third day. There is a military drill that shatters the ground, the bullets no, fly. Yeah. People don't like this life yeah, and it's very natural. It's a very natural... Uh, this is why I always say that these barbed wires is not only against uh, the international law, but the law against the nature of humans and yeah. human law. Okay. They cannot last forever. Yeah. But of course our task is, and th I thank Austria for steadfast support for Georgia's territorial integrity mm. and sovereignty, this is very important, and to our peace policy, which is very dynamic, because we try to take steps to proactively help these people on ground, to build trust, build bridges, and somehow overcome these obnoxious sparked wires by peace. But we need international support yeah, in that. And uh, Georgia's conflicts are not only isolated case. You are well aware, we spoke about Eastern Partnership. Look at this stream. Yeah. We have all three countries of South Caucasus affected by the conflict. We have Ukraine, we have Moldova. Yeah, yeah. And you can assume that this is not unfortunately by chance. It's not unfortunately by chance. Are there any dialogues and no negotiations directly between Georgia and Russia? Yes, there is a Geneva International Discussions. Mm -hmm. This is a discussion between uh, Georgia and Russia where the European Union, the OSCE and the UN are okay. facilitators of the process, co-chairs. United States also part participates and now, now the discussions uh, involve the representatives of these regimes as well, but they are just participants of it. And we are, uh, we have a clear agenda there to discuss mm. because it was, it's a part of the ceasefire agreement which was mediated by European Union back in 2008 okay. in the August. Mm. Uh, very unfortunate thing is that this format is super politicized, sometimes uh, very difficult to, it does not deliver upon the core issues, which is like no news of force. Georgia okay. unilaterally took this pledge many times, but it's still missing from Russia to mm. implement this pledge. Mm. Second is international security arrangements. These regions are isolated from international access, basically. Mm. So nobody can enter even yeah. human rights monitoring missions. Yeah. Yeah. And the third is return of IDPs and mm. refugees, and we spoke that unfortunately they are not uh, allowed back. There are many other humanitarian issues which sometimes become a hostage of uh, super politicized positions from the other side, which otherwise could be solved. Like for instance, 
kids going to school yeah. without being checked by security forces yeah. on the road or elderly moving across uh, these so-called crossing points which are mostly closed mm. and you know those things which make people's lives like a nightmare but it could have solutions before big political solutions yes. are found yeah, okay. uh, one more thing because i was responsible for yeah. that as a minister uh, we have a very dynamic peace policy so we offer a lot of uh, creative, innovative, even status neutral solutions for, for instance, facilitating trade, facilitating education for the those people who still live in Abkhazia and South Ossetia occupied mm -hmm. regions, um, health, which is provided yeah. for free, healthcare, mm -hmm. and many people benefit from Georgia's healthcare mm -hmm. services. And this mended a lot of uh, bridges. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, as I say, we have the modern Berlin walls, which run uh, now in Georgia, mm -hmm. and we all need to stand together to bring them down. Mm -hmm. right. It's um, yeah, it's unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, yeah, it's the it's the the current fact. Yeah, but as it's we say, these walls, artificial walls, cannot last forever. Yeah. Really, they yeah. are running against. Uh, people try to overcome these walls. They are captured and sent back. And mm. these people want to come for I don't know basic needs, to mm. buy something in the shop which is not available on the other side. Um, um, very simple medicine. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, something that they would need for 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 feeding their families. Yeah. Yeah. So, you cannot forever take people hostage, uh, no. like in a ghetto. Yeah. And this looks like, unfortunately, yeah. like that. No. 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 Not forever. How would you describe the um, relationship between Georgia and Austria in principle? And especially, of course, in the, we are interested in the economic field. What would you say is this uh, relationship? between our two countries. I would say that this is great, excellent, uh, and it's only growing stronger, this mm. partnership. We had only in the course of last, I would say, few months, like three months, we had so many high-level meetings mm -hmm. at the level of uh, heads of parliament, the chancellor, prime here. minister. We had an official uh, visit of our president on yeah. the invitation of the federal president. Yeah. So. It's, it's a very full, very quickly developing agenda and very friendly atmosphere. I'm very happy about that. So, uh, of course, you know, a big part of it is also economic cooperation. We had an interagency economic uh, uh, council meeting between our ministries of mm -hmm. economy, which is institutionalized. And uh, this time it was in Vienna. So a lot of spheres like trade, transport, digitalization, mm -hmm. agriculture. Uh, tourism has been discussed as areas where cooperation should deepen and with concrete projects, of course. We had the business forum, which was opened by the two presidents mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at your chamber okay. in cooperation with the G Georgian Chamber of Commerce and Trade, uh, with participation of business community from both countries. And in, in this month, only three weeks from now, we will have an Austrian business delegation visiting in Georgia. We already have Austrian uh, investors and businesses mm -hmm. presented in Georgia. In many areas, logistics, hydropower, which is another thing that connects, uh, we, we have in uh, similar, so we have also high mountains, tourism yeah. is part of us. <laughs> We have also a lot of resources of hydropower and Austria mm. is very much specialized and advanced on that. Um, so we have agriculture. So there are really many similarities, not only the colors of our flags, by the way, yeah. which are yeah. also similar, but uh, also hospitality culture. And this has been have been areas where we discuss to increase our cooperation. Uh, as I said, for now, we have investors in hydropower, in, in production, for instance, Rauch is present, okay. Andritz is present, uh, and in skiing and tourism infrastructure, we have mainly Austrian companies like Leitner, Doppelmayr being present, Weiss, uh, uh, and uh, some others, of course. But as our Ministry of Economy said, and the Ministry of Economy of Austria said, there is a lot of untapped potential, okay. which means that we can only grow in this direction. Okay, um, I will come back to the the fields um, uh, of, of our institute uh, where we are working. Um, the city of uh, Boromi and uh, the Autonomous Republic of Ajara um, have been members uh, of the Institute of the Regent for years. 
the cooperation is very, very good and uh, we had also students as interns at uh, the ERA. Do you see the potential that other regions and cities are also or could be also interested in a cooperation with our institute? Uh, because I would say it is uh, not only uh, important to have good contacts on the on the national level, but also on the local and regional level. Uh, and uh, I would be very happy if you could give us some ideas uh, with whom we could uh, have a cooperation or we could start with a cooperation. I absolutely agree with you and I must also confirm that for me uh, during my stay here in Vienna one of the uh, in, and in Austria one of the priorities is to advance the regional cooperation so basically cooperation between the regions of our two countries so I, I truly believe uh, uh, with all the experience I may have uh, that uh, People, the, the politics which has impact on people is mostly done in the regions. And as we want to do politics which has impact on people, of course the way is to advance the cooperation between the regions. There is already a few years ago uh, Steiermark and one of the uh, mm -hmm. winemaking more yeah. prominent regions of Georgia are already friends, so they had a memorandum of uh, cooperation and understanding. By the way, Georgia is in the world so far the oldest wine culture of uh -huh. 8,000 yeah. years and yeah. before somebody discovers anything uh, that is older than Georgian armed force and the wine remains, we still remain the wine cradle so we very much like to be proud of it. So winemaking region Kacheti is already friends. Only recently in September we have made uh, made friends between Tyrol and uh, Samegrelo Semusvaneti, the high mountainous region, mm -hmm. which also has an access in Georgia to the sea, but mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. So uh, between these two regions and a lot of areas which we are planning to explore again with a heavy focus on tourism. Now I'm in Salzburg and I'm very happy that I had all the official meetings and I have a possibility to visit your institute, which is exactly networking European yeah. regions and uh, including the two Georgian regions, which I'm very happy about it. And I can already tell you uh, quite confidently that the interest from Georgian regions to develop these partnerships mm -hmm. is there, okay. is high. And from our visit, we will take it only forward Super. and uh, we will be in touch, hopefully, yeah, with your kind support to, to find out and to pave the way for m more Georgian regions to be part of the network. Okay. Thank you very much. In this sense, I'm looking forward to our next meeting. Uh, and thank you for your time and for this interview. Uh, and all the best and have a nice time in Salzburg. Thank you so very much. Thank you.